research. Yeah. Good afternoon to one and all. Uh, so my topic here is the framework for progressive evaluation of lean construction maturity rating using the multi-dimensional matrix. So what exactly uh, comes into is, is the, I'm trying to uh, make a framework. Sorry. So uh, before that, yeah, I'm a student, I'm a master student from in Indian Institute of Technology, Madras, and guided by Professor Raghavan and Professor Koshi. So the, So my presentation will go as follows, like uh, these are the contents. So I'll start with the introduction. So basically lean has many definitions uh, given by many people. Uh, I chose this one because uh, I believe in this, as lean is a transformational change uh, which, um, which, has, which is aimed to do the majorly these two things, I mean the waste elimination and the creating value for the customers. So what exactly I'm trying to show in, with this picture here is that it will start following the lean as identifying the value, value streaming, creating a flow, establishing pull and seek perfection. But what exactly is the background for the framework which I'm planning to make? So many, many construction companies are there who are trying to start the lean implementation, but uh, before the, calling it as a lean, they're trying to implement many improvement practices. Some call it lean, some call it 5S, some they call it Sig uh, Six Sigma. But there's some kind of uh, improvement practices, and they have achieved some amount of relative success. But uh, how much is a question? Actually, like they 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 know that some amount of success they have uh, found out during the implementation of the improvement process for, uh, in terms of sh uh, short-term successes. But how much they are able to sustain to it, and how much they are able to find success out of it? It's difficult for them in determining the extent of benefits from them. Uh, and when we look into the research in the literature, we see that there's still a positive of uh, the scientific rating system because it's not that standardized for the lean, uh, lean maturity. In terms of lean, the framework has not been uh, perfectly made for all the people to use. There have been few, like for example, when we, uh, So what exactly is happening in this framework system around the globe when we see that, so there have been few models which have come like, for example, in the manufacturing industry, if you talk about, there is, a, there is one from the Mr. Donovan in 2015, he has got something like lean maturity. So he has made it an audit base. So he has used a binary system of yes and no to, so to evaluate the lean performance in the manufacturing industry. Similarly, by Nesenhan, uh, uh, he has presented his paper along the, uh, almost like from past three, four years in the IGLC also on lean construction maturity model. It also includes all the factors, all the concepts, but the process in which it has to be taken care uh, is mentioned in, but not in detail. And one more institution, one more organization is in from the UK, which is the Highway Agency Lean Maturity Assessment Toolkit. They call it HALMAT. So it's, it's a trans, uh, transport industry in the UK which are trying to implement, uh, I mean, the, implement this lean mature, try to determine the lean maturity using this, the toolkit which they have prepared in-house. Uh, few, a few more are there who are, who are planning, who are uh, trying to bring out what are the major factors uh, through which they can determine what, ex how exactly the lean can be measured in, in, the, in the industry because uh, when we see there, there is no perfect definition for lean, like few people trying to measure the lean as a le uh, lean as a leadership, few people talk about the customer focus. There, there, there are similarities between all kinds of factors uh, from the various departments, but there's nothing very much standardized on what exactly is lean as we are not able to still define it perfectly. So what are the research goals for this, my, uh, my, the, my research? Uh, Basically, I need to set up a framework for auditing the lean implementation in the construction industry. <laughs> so this being the major objective, what, what, what could be sub-objectives, what could be the sub-goals? So uh, what we have done is uh, we have tried to identify what are the practices from the literature, and secondly, we tried to go to the industries 
and uh, got to know what kind of tool, what kind of tools, or what kind of practices they are following in the, in the uh, in, uh, with respect to lean. The next most critical thing is the weightages. Like, do all the parameters have to be given the same weightages, or do the weightages vary from different organizations based on what are their goals or visions? Because we need to, uh, everybody may not follow the same vision of like should we focus on the customer focus or should we get into the leadership of the lean. So the weightages play the major role. So with all these connecting dots, we are able to, uh, we are able to develop a framework uh, which I'll be showing in the next slides. So when you talk about the like the research contribution which I had, so the first thing which we are able to uh, do it is the lean construction as we have a, we try to divide it into three stages. Basically, the physical, which talks about the implementation of lean as the tools and the processes. Next, we divide into the behavior, which we call it as stage two, or the behavioral manifestation, wherein we are more talking about the lean as a culture. And finally, when the lean has been, like lean can be taken as a strategy uh, by the top management. So you, uh, and this, these three stages has been plotted on a, a graph, uh, stage-wise and zone-wise, uh, which I'll be explaining you in the uh, later slides. Now. So when we talk about the, uh, the sub-goals, uh, which talks about the le uh, lean, which has been got from the literature. So we're able to identify few of the, param few of the practices or the parameters. Uh, like in the physical, we have tried to nominate these things like implementation of lean tools and process. Continuous improvement can be one of the factor. Work standardization can be one. And similarly, when we come to the behavioral manifestation, lean culture, the develop, people development in terms of like training people towards the lean. So these, these are considered to be the parameters. And when we come to the strategy, the customer focus and leadership. Uh, even like most of the parameters can be similar to the other papers or uh, uh, which have been done earlier, uh, but what exactly we had tried to do is, uh, for example, like then the, after the first point, the second we have met the industrialists who have been practicing these kind of parameters. So with that, we are able to divide uh, each and every concept, like the continuous improvement, the collaborative working into different attributes. So what could be the maximum attributes we can fill in when we call about co collaborative work? What exactly I'm trying to say is that when we say collaborative working, what could come here? Like in partnering, evaluation of sub subcontractor vendors, uh, coordinated drawing, sharing, chain note sharing. So what I'm trying to bring through these attributes are the processes. So they, th these are the processes which relate to this. And exactly here, uh, what can be done is I'm, con I'm trying to convert all these attributes into a processes on a binary scale, whether it can be a yes or a no. So I'm trying to directly question them as like, for example, when we say partnering. So is trust being generated between the partner to avoid a floating of bid? Like are we maintaining the same trust that instead of being pa partnering with the same vendors and the same subcontractors again and again, instead of making a bid on a regular basis because that kind of increases the processes, increases the time, increases the money. So are we retaining our bid? Are we retaining our comp uh, the vendors and subcontractors? So on a similar way, all the attributes, uh, all the parameters have been converted to processes to scale it on a binary scale, on a yes or no basis. So yeah, the, the, third, the third objective was to determine the weightages. Like should we give the common weightages to all the parameters or should we change the parameters? So on that note, we have decided to uh, take a, uh, a Likert scale survey, of a five point Likert scale survey, and we went to all the industrialists and the lean practitioners around the, uh, like within India, uh, uh, and we have uh, tried to de uh, determine all the weightages. So uh, use, uh, using this Likert scale, and we have tried to apply the RII tool, like the Relative Importance Index, uh, and we able to get the scores between these, uh, which have been given the weightages like if this, the RI is from 0.75 to 0.8, it's one, and similarly the way. So these are the weightages which we could collect from the data which we had, from the data points which we collected. So after connecting those two dots, uh, those three dots, one, one, two, three, we're able to develop something, a framework of this kind. 
so it starts with the lean evaluation checklist wherein uh, the one which I was showing regarding the all the processes which are be yeah, uh, divided into three uh, three levels. The next thing we can get in from the lean evaluation checklist, we can go to the consolidated state score wherein the what are the weightages we got here can be multiplied here and we can get a score here. And finally, when the consolidated score gets uh, into that, then that, that is where we will be using the lean maturity progressive curve. So this is the sample data which we uh, try to show as an example on how it can be worked out. So if these are the weightages and these are the scores, uh, the, the stage by scores can be, uh, can be derived from by doing the weighted average. So how exactly this graph works? So when I say like uh, these are the ranges like 0 to 4, 4 to 7, 7 to 10. So by default we believe that all the organizations or the project comes in the range of 0 to 4. And when we get these scores like 8.1 for the physical, 7.5 the behavioral and strategic for the 6.3, I've showed the calculation here. So by default, we consider it to be zone A. So we multiply it, and we see that it's coming 7.7. .7. But our zone A is like 0 to 4. So until the score converges with the stage, the, with the stage score, with the zone score, we try to implement this process. So when we tried with the 7 to 10 zone, wherein the percentages are 40, 30, 30. I mean 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.0. It came around 7.35, which, which converges with the zone score of 7 to 10. So now we can consider that this this organization, this project, uh, comes in through, it comes into the range of a zone A. Is, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, zone C. So for example, yeah. So when 7.35 7 we came, so we tried with uh, the zone B also. With zone B, it's 4 to 7, but still we got 7.56. So it didn't converge. So until the con the score converges within the score zone, we'll try redo it. So uh, why, why exactly we're trying to do this is to standardize. Like, for example, if any organization is saying that they can implement tools and all those things at the site level fully, like they are scoring 10 on that score, but still what exactly happens is that the 10 is brought down to, when the 10 is checked over this, it comes to around 5.5 only. So they won't score 10, they score just 5.5 out of 10. So in a way that we are trying to standardize all the companies into a, sing, into a single framework. So if, if they are not even like if they're not concentrating on the physical, I mean the culture part of it and the strategic part of it, and they only want to focus the tools to get the short-term success, that won't help them much. Uh, this can be the graphical representation of the spider web to have an easy visibility of where the organization is. Uh, so what exactly we can conclude from this? This uh, it should be an audit-based uh, framework which uh, can be audited on a regular basis of a quarterly or a half yearly basis. And most importantly, this framework includes the parameters like people development, the culture building, and the strategic, wherein we, we, try, uh, wherein we are, can also bring the tools, but we also can bring the cult culture together. What could be the limitations in that are like when we try to apply it to the, when we try to convert everything to a quantifiable basis. We may not convert all the parameters, all the process of the lean into a quantifiable basis like on a binary scale of yes or no. So that was one of the limitation. And other, uh, other limitation is that the fruitfulness of lean implementation. So it cannot be short term, it has to be realized over the longer periods only. So uh, the, uh, on, uh, and any organization who are trying to use this has to use it for a, uh, some more amount of time to see the difference. Uh, so what could be the future scope of this work as it has to go to the many hands who are the lean practitioners who are trying to and try to validate this model before the whole standardized framework comes into the world. And many the maturity models need to be tested by many of the organizations to check the feasibility of it. And one more thing uh, the, well, about the weightages which I was talking about, should the weightages be organization specific with respect to the organization or should the weightages be more common to all? Like we try to keep it more common here, but should it be more common or should it be organization specific based on their visions and goals. Uh, with that.